Imagine a childhood memory of walking along a bushy creek, lost in your own world. The chances are that your picture will look a bit like Joe Kirby's backyard. Welcome to Land Talk, the program that tells the stories of people on the land. My name is Matt Sykes. Twelve years ago, Joe was a typical Aussie bloke, watching footy, drinking beer with his mates and working on oil rigs in Bass Strait. But then something happened. He moved to the country and a childhood fascination with birds was reignited. Joe, thanks for having us. What changed when you and your wife Tanya moved to the property at, at Garfield? It's the ambience we had um, at, at Garfield compared to what we had down in the peninsula. It was just so peaceful. There's a lot more variety of birds on the, on the property and I started taking a better interest in remembering when I was a child that I used to mm. see them, but in uh, the peninsula you don't see them much anymore. Mm. Six years ago, you moved to Shady Creek. What did you see in this property? I saw the bush and the ferns and the, the natural habitat was just sensational, the undulating hills, but it was surrounded by bald dairy farms and mm. what we had what I saw here was just a gem mm. Mm. and I thought what can we do to this place to enhance it or how can it enhance our uh, knowledge of of the environment and when I started noticing that there's more birds here than I've ever or native birds here than I've ever seen before um, I thought well this would be a good place to uh, mm. enlighten myself and get away from the everyday uh, starling sparrows and Indian miners <laughs> and uh, enjoy the, the, uh, the rest of the bird life and see what habitat they live in. So most people without farming experience would have put some cattle on the pasture and only entered the bush to cut down some firewood. But that wasn't what you did, was it? No, because of the environmental side of things, which I wasn't too aware of, I, and also that I wasn't very aware of what to do with a cow and whether you milk it or whether you cut it up or things like that. And I, I like animals, I like birds, and I like the environment. And we thought, well, what's, what's going to be easier? Leave the bush as it is. It's a approximately 60-, 80-year-old remnant bush, it's, mm. uh, which is quite aged for this area. As I say, all around this area is dairy farms and just dead flat pasture, and you go to uh, put fertiliser on the pasture, then you've got to look after the cattle and you've got to do all these things. But with the bush, it looks after itself. Mm. You've found a way to protect this special uh, piece of bushland through bush brokering. Bush brokering is when a developer has to remove some vegetation um, through the government legislation, they have to have an offset. An offset being is they have to replace like for like, approximately. Um, so what the developer does uh, sorry, what the DSC do, they put the developer onto a landowner who's got vegetation similar to what mm. they have to remove. Okay. So then we come to a, an agreement if they pay us some money to look mm -hmm. after the vegetation on our property mm -hmm. by fencing it off, keeping stock out and letting it regenerate in its natural way. So the developer therefore has to pay for that, pay me to look after it and um, that's how we derive an income from that. Okay. So why is the bush on your property so significant? Except for this little package of bush here, the swampy riparian, um, the previous owners decided to keep some of it. What they've kept is probably only 1% of what should have been in the whole the Gippsland Plain bioregion, right. which goes from Melbourne down to Portsea, comes in around the Streslecky area, then goes down to Sale. Okay. So this this area here is, uh, is, is very important for the fact is it's the last type of, well, it's only 1% left of its type in the whole uh, Gippsland bioregion, so okay. it's a, a pretty big area. So there's a whole host of endangered and threatened species on your property. Can you tell us a bit more about those? Yeah, well, along with the, uh, the vegetation itself, the swampy riparian, as I say, it's uh, only 1% left in the Gippsland Plain bioregion of this size. Uh, it's also the trees, the, the Streslecki tree, they're endangered. Mm -hmm. We've got the growling grass frog, mm -hmm. which is endangered. We've got the West Gippsland crayfish, which okay. is endangered. Mm -hmm. Joe, there was one particular bird that caught you off guard one day. What happened? Tanya and I, when we first moved in here, uh, <laughs> we're around and walking, and we hear this. <whistles> and Tanya's looking for me. Where is he? 
where is he? And I'm looking for her, whistling at me, she's hiding somewhere. It's a grey striped thrush. It's a bird. That's how they, that's their whistle. And it's a real distinct... <laughs> Because your vegetation is endangered, what is the value through bush brokering? The, the value changes, um, but it's, it's, it's higher than what a, a vulnerable vegetation would be. Once we've negotiated a price, the developer then forwards the money to the DSC. The DSC then uh, submit um, a percentage of that money each year mm. over a 10-year period. Mm. So far, over the last four years, We've uh, derived approximately fifty thousand dollars each year, or average fifty thousand dollars each year, and that's tax-free money and right to the end of the ten years. What would be your advice for people with an interest in the land, but not necessarily an experience in looking after it? Well, you, you don't really have to look after much because it looks after itself as long as you fence it off and keep the weeds free uh, from from the vegetation itself. The vegetation will eventually take over. You don't have to know a lot about it. There's a lot on the DSC website about it. Um, you don't know, have to know much about how trees grow, how bush grows, but once you take a, a, an interest in it, it grows on you, and it's quite easy to learn. You, you don't have to learn about it. You have to learn about a cow, how it milks, how it calves, and things like that. With this vegetation, or with all vegetation, you don't have to. It's natural, native vegetation. Mm. I had an 80-year-old fellow ring me up who had some vegetation on 400 acres. And he asked me about bush broker because he heard about it. So he's an 80-year-old fellow wanting to learn about it to tr derive a bit of an income, but mainly to look after the vegetation he's got on his property. And it, he, he enjoys it because, it's, uh, because of ambience. Some people think that what you're doing is quite radical, including the guy who cleared trees from this land with an army tanker. Tell us about that. I was out playing golf at Trafalgar one day and playing with this fella and uh, 70 odd years of age and uh, he asked me what I did and I told him that I moved to Shady Creek and that uh, we're doing a bush broker program and he said, what's that? I explained it and he said, years ago I came out here and it was all bush. He said, my wife wouldn't come out here until we cleared some land so I bought an army tank put a big blade on the army tank and start pushing all the sword grass and the trees and everything down. And I've cleared a lot of land around here and you're telling me you're going out and planting more trees. And which I said, yeah, we're planting trees and we're planting corridors for, uh, from one set of bush to another set of bush so the birds and animals have got a corridor to go through safely rather than being eaten up or killed by something else. So that was quite, quite amazing that Here's this fellow from 70 odd years of age, has cleared this land, and here's this other fellow coming along who's 55 years of age, and he's, he's uh, replanting. So we had a big laugh about that. In Australia, learning to care for the land isn't considered a very manly thing. How can we get over this cultural baggage? Well, I think a lot of people may have uh, tunnel vision. This is the way we've done things for years and years and years, and this is the way. The only way we know how to do things is generating an income. I've got a good car, I've got a good this, I've got a good that, and we've been doing this thing for, for years and years. This is how we did it, so why change? Well, I haven't changed. I've just left what's here here, and it's developed around me. And that's how we're deriving an, an income with minimal work. We don't have to worry about uh, feeding the pastures or feeding the cows or uh, fixing machinery. We're just letting the environment do the environment and it's a lot easier and it's a lot more natural and it's a lot more enjoyable. I find it a lot more enjoyable than having to go out and um, bury a cow or do things like that. So I think it's, it's not so much not being blokey, it's just being smart. Joe is a revelation and he sets a challenge for all those suburban men who are heading into the twilight of their working life and being tempted by the leisurely pursuits of retirement. Joe insists that bush brokering is not about the money, even though it is lucrative, but rather it is the opportunity to feel good, caring for something that will benefit generations to come. My name is Matt Sykes, and this has been Land Talk.